So it's unquestionable that the need is here. And there's enrollment data and statistics that will support that all day long. What I think people need to appreciate is what, what we look like absent a new school. Mm-hmm. And so what does this town look like two years from now if we, don't, if we don't build a new Grafton High School? And I guess the first place I want people to go in their minds is to Millbury Street. And I want them to take a look and in their minds visualize Grafton Elementary School. And imagine it's not there. And then I want them to think about where those third, fourth, and fifth graders, 700 700 of them, might be if that building wasn't there. And and I I don't don't have an answer to that. I mean, I I, I guess they'd be squished into the corner. I mean, South Grafton is full. uh, South Grafton is full. I mean... We probably would have done some redistricting, regrading, uh, reconfiguration of grades to accommodate, you know, growth in one part of the town versus another. But where would they be? So, so think about think about the fact that Grafton Elementary School may not exist. So, what is what does Grafton look like without Grafton a new Grafton High School? It looks like well, so you, so you have the existing school, you have the existing overcrowding. You have, um, you have existing overcrowding that um, represents a safety issue. It represents a threat to your ability to deliver core curriculum, to meet the expectations that the state has laid out for your ability to deliver these core curriculum. It means that your high school student um, should probably not bother to eat such a big breakfast because they'll be eating lunch at 9.30. It potentially means double sessions. It means a bunch of prob- of short term fixes just to just to alleviate the safety mm-hmm. concerns, which could could ultimately be um, something that the you know that the building inspector gets involved in, or the police get involved in, the fire the fire get, chief gets involved in, because we can't get kids out of the building fast enough in the event of a, of a fire. You have an accreditation right now that is at risk. So we are, are, we've been on, we're on morning status as far as NEASC is concerned. Our, we're supposed to be reevaluated in 2011 um, I, I, without any changes to the existing infrastructure. There's no, my guess is that we won't, we won't secure accreditation in 2011. Um, now, people could say, well, okay, add, just, just throw some modulars onto the high school. Okay, we'll throw modulars onto the high school. How many? Because it took a cost a million to put four classrooms onto the middle school, mm-hmm. um, so I don't know eight, twelve classrooms. So it's three, four million unreimbursed money right out of your pocket, um, and you and and so you've added classroom space, which is great, but you still haven't solved that bell change problem with all those kids collecting in the hallway, trying to get out in the event of a fire. Um, you haven't solved the lunch problem because you're not adding any infrastructure improvements. Um, you're still holding physical education in the hallways because you're not adding on to the gym. Your shop classes are you know, still in basically outdoor facilities for all intents and purposes. They're maintenance bays that have been taken over. Um, you know, and, and, and a future uncertain. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got six to 600 outstanding building permits. You've got kids um, who... The most significant growth in the in the system hasn't even isn't even close to approaching the high school yet, and those people, from in many cases, have only had their first child. There's more mm-hmm. coming, and and I say that I'm sort of chuckling about it because it's the in the the problem has yet to even fully maximize. I mean, the problem exists in in the way I've described right now today. February 1st, you can walk up to that high school and you can see what I've described. Kids in the hallways, kids waiting to get, you know, taking turns with science labs, you know, so it exists. And, and, it, and, it, and it just gets precipitously worse as we go. So we'll continue to have at Grafton Middle School is, is what you have, again, what you have today. It's maxed out. Um, stages that have been turned into classrooms, electrical causes that are turned into special ed rooms, um, you know, they, they, they appreciate some relief because we gave them the modulars. But again, there's no infrastructure improvement. I use that word infrastructure a lot, but it's so important to this process. Um, the cafeteria doesn't isn't changed. The, the gym hasn't changed. The fields haven't changed. The hallways didn't get any wider. Um, 
So, so you've got the existing crowding problems at Grafton Middle School that go unresolved. GES, I already told you, is overcrowded. Mm -hmm. Has reached their capacity. We know we will not. We do not today, and nor will we in the future, without additional space, have the ability to offer full day kindergarten. And in this day and age, that's unconscionable. Out of three hundred, almost four hundred, three hundred and some communities in Massachusetts, we're one of, I don't know, less than twenty or so that do not offer full day kindergarten. And to me, that's extraordinary. Is it going to affect people's ability to sell their house? I mean, I don't know. The economy affects people's ability to sell their house. Um, and, and I think property value tends to be, is, is, can be a bit subjective, and people, you know, look at what they, you know, pe people have individual needs in terms of what they want to get out of their homes mm -hmm. based on what they paid for them and how long they've been there. So to say sort of globally that the property value issue is, um, is going to affect everybody the same, it just doesn't. But having said that, um, the failure of a community to provide a solid educational program for student, for kids, um, absolutely affects property value. And the fact that you've got, that we will be sitting here with an unaccredited high school absolutely affects property value. Yes, the lack of an accredited high school affects property value. The lack of, of a community to support a high school effort says a lot about a community, I think. Um, and, and that turns people away from the possibility that they'll buy here, and it certainly impacts someone's ability to sell their house because that buyer isn't there anymore mm -hmm. because of that. Um, I also believe, and, and you know, it's interesting, an L, a senior made this comment to me, and his comment was this, they did it for my kids, I have to do it for the next group of kids. Mm -hmm. And that was his, he is, I, I, I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna say how old he is, but that's, but he's an elderly man, he's got grandchildren, he's lived in town for a long time, um, and that's his perspective, that it's almost a moral obligation to provide a solid educational opportunity for kids. And our failure to, to put this high school, to develop this high school, is, um, would be failing that, that obligation. I can't, I can't stress this enough. If you think that this is going to pass because you talked to your neighbors and they said, oh, it'll pass, and then you talk to people at the, the, at the bus stop and it's going to pass, and you talk to people at the soccer game and it's going to pass, um, then you are selling yourself and the, pro and, and the project <coughs> short. You're only talking to people who are just like you, and they want it to pass, so they believe it will pass, but it, but it, it won't pass unless you're there. So uh, again, with, with as much emphasis as I can, I can convey through this, this interview, you gotta blow off your soccer games on Saturday morning. You gotta give hockey a rest for a couple of hours. You've gotta say no to ballet and gymnastics. Find a babysitter, the GEA is positioned to help with that. Um, and you and your spouse have to be at town meeting on Saturday. If you leave this which is the most important, most significant financial decision this community has made in the last, I mean, aside from GES, um, I mean, certainly the decision to build a fire station was important, the decision to build a police station was important, but in terms of cost, this is the big kahuna. If you leave this to someone else, then you are, and you have children in this system, or you have any sense of obligation to this community, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And it's, it, it, frankly, it, it, to me, it borders on, on, on being irresponsible. So you must be there. There's been plenty of opportunity to get educated. If there are questions, you can contact Rich McCarthy. You can certainly contact me or any member of the building committee via email or telephone. I mean, we've quite literally been available at all hours to, to answer questions and talk with people about their concerns. So um, anything last minute, get it out. But, um, but please be there. <laughs>